For God so loved the world that God gave the only begotten Son. God is a giving God, not a God of withholding. No, that's not the kind of God that we serve. God delights in giving good gifts. Through the past weeks, we have been talking about that, the unexpected gifts that comes from God, of which one of those is Jesus himself coming into the world. And in that coming, there is that thought of turn your eyes upon Jesus, to look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth, whether they are good things or bad things, will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And as we turn our eyes unto Jesus, the, the gift of God given to us, it brings us into like-minded people uh, and into a committed community together where we asked the question a couple of Sundays ago, what's in your wallet? That is, what is that which identifies you? Christ is our identity. And in that identity... Are we lifted into the curiosity of wanting to know who Christ is? And remember the, the story of two of the disciples of John the baptizer who, who came to Jesus and, and were following Jesus. And Jesus said, what are you looking for? And, and they said, where is it that you're staying? Where is it that we can come and talk with you and observe you and learn of you. And Jesus said to them, come and see. And when they came and saw and they were, had that opportunity to talk with Jesus, it began to embolden them. Do you remember one of those disciples was Andrew? And Andrew went to his brother Simon, whom Jesus would call Cephas, the rock, and in that bold action of Andrew to, to go and to, to tell his brother of the Messiah being there, Jesus, and we'll look at it this Sunday, is in motion and says, keep moving, keep on moving to where we're going to be headed next. Matthew chapter 4, which would be the passage for this week, is as Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net out into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets, and they followed Jesus. There will come a time in everyone's life when bold choices need to be made. From deeply personal actions like in the public arena calling out uh, some kind of wrong that is going on and working that into the daily conversations as to how Jesus is comes into those wrongs and, and helps to fix those wrongs and reaching out into global actions, like how we can engage our political systems, not, not how our political systems come into the church, but how we as the church go out into the political systems and bring about changes because of being followers of Christ. There will be a time when we need to answer those words, follow me, concerning all of the contexts that we find ourselves in. Following Christ Jesus is complex. We have made many uh, aspects uh, accessible in this following Jesus, built some structures to support and collectively agreed that certain ways of how people work and act are just and right. And yet there are still times when we will have to step out and step away from what we have been in order to discover what God is leading us to become. A difficult aspect of following Christ out into the unknown is that so many others may be dismissive, confused by our actions, 
are even downright oppositional. There will always be rational reasons not to follow Christ, maybe because of our own personal safety, or maybe it's because of the security of our families and the burden of being judged even by the community of which we live. That said, our faith demands us always to discern where God is leading. Not only do we have to always be alert for the ways in which God's path is being revealed before us, but we then have to continually decide if we're going to walk that path that God calls us to. What ordinary people have you seen make bold choices despite the risk or the opposition that they face? You know, it's easy to hold up as heroes people who have chosen bold actions, but we should be weary of encouraging the idea that one has to become some kind of larger-than-life figure in order to follow Christ in bold ways. Often real and lasting change is made when many ordinary people make a bold choice together as a group. How might we, as the community of Ormond Beach Presbyterian Church, discern what it means to follow as a group of Jesus's people? As difficult as discerning God's call can be, I've always found that what seems bold and risky to others seems quite normal and natural to those who genuinely trust that they are following where God is leading. Holding this tension between the unstable and unknown and a clarity of calling is a gift that allows us to be bold in how we live our faith and it gives us courage and calm in order to follow. Taking a bold challenge to live differently in the world, both individually and together, is a wonderful gift that our Lord encourages us to open and explore. Now that is good news. Amen.